Hi, it's Sonia and I've got a, another sketchbook tour. This is a Artesia mixed me, no, it's not a mixed media. It's an Artesia watercolor sketchbook that I have had for a very long time, uh, but I've only just recently completed it. I've got no idea, to be honest with you, when I did start it. Um, and it's basically a, a mismatch. It's kind of loose, though it kind of starts off relatively tight for me. Um, I'd say it's mostly still life but there is a couple of landscapes, loose landscape paintings in here. Um, and yeah, I like I like the sketchbook. This is, uh, I have to say though, if I'm honest, I do think the Artesia mixed media ones are kind of like better value for money, especially on offer. And um, they've got more pages. But on the other hand, if you do love watercolour and you want to fill up a, feel like the satisfaction of filling up the sketchbook relatively quickly. This is this is um, a good one and it's, you can get them on offer as well sometimes. I'm gonna have to push things up a bit. Okay, so this first page is, uh, I think I drew it. It was so long ago I did this. I can, I think it was from real life. So it was um, a vase of flowers. I remember one of the kids bought me that vase for my birthday. And I think I made up the background colours but otherwise I did try and paint from life in gouache and that's some gold gouache as well there which is quite nice. Here I've also again this is relatively tight and from life and I've obviously masked off that border um, and it's some like you know you the uh, I've got a plant in front of me but sort of some dead uh, what are they called? What are they called here? I'm not quite sure of the name of the plant. This one here, it says an anth an anthurium, but um, I think used to call them like peace lilies, I think. In... Anyway, that plant there, it's the, when the flowers are dead, I use them as a uh, reference. And here, some tulips. I feel I've got, obviously I was getting a bit bored drawing this vase because I've made up this pattern on it. So I think even from the start, I think the problem was I didn't really want to use this sketchbook because I got I got precious because it was like a, you know like a watercolor sketchbook, and then I was like I've, I need to uh, use it. It's silly just keeping it um, and not wanting to paint in it. So I deliberately tried to loosen up on this page. I think and testing out how it would take quite heavy watercolor. And I think I intended to go over the top with gouache, but what happened was I discovered that it took watercolour really well. Naturally, it's high quality, hopefully, watercolour paper. And you got, the, you know, the accidental blooms and blossoms that obviously watercolour artists, I guess. I'm not a watercolour artist, I've got to be honest, really. I mean, I use them a lot. Well, I use them, but um, I really enjoyed the experience. And I just thought, I want to keep this page as it is. I kind of liked how that turned out. Then I did, I really should date stuff, but um, sometimes I don't feel the need in these sort of sketchbooks. It's more, I guess, sort of for me, for references, for learning um, and for print ideas. Um, this was obviously a landscape from a reference photo and I tried to be quite loose and I used gouache. Um, and I think you can also, in these sketchbooks, it's quite fun to experiment sometimes with borders or no borders. How am I going to have to push this stuff up? Here is, I'm not sure about this page. This, this sketchbook, I've got to say, is one that I may consider coming back in and altering. This was a very experimental page for me, I felt at the time, because I was going really loose um, and... Yeah, I sort of drew super loosely. I mean, that's a play, and I've it's kind of very what's the word playful, I guess. Um, from from life, though, I used to actually make up still life arrangements and then paint draw from. You know, I tried to practice, I guess, some sort of observational composition, um, but also at the same time going loose, like not trying to be so accurate with it, and that's what resulted. I don't, I've got, I, I, there's interesting areas that I like that I want to sort of think about, sort of, you know, this loose drawing with the brush. 
So I guess that's why I don't want to get rid of it. And this page also, I'm not completely sure about in some ways, but there's elements that I've learned from and I like that I might want to bring into, if I, you know, if I'm ever stuck for ideas, sketchbooks are great. Your own sketchbooks are great to go to for um, more inspiration. And if you really want to loosen up recently, I've really tried going back to them. Like this would be interesting to draw from because it is so, I can't get bogged, I won't be able to get bogged down into the details of the plant because I've already simplified it in this sketch, if you see what I mean. You could even like abstract it, but I do actually quite like, there's something in here, why well, I like it, uh, the sort of the colours against sort of the neons, um, The oil, this is oil pastel as a drawing medium, and then I've come on top with some, it looks like wash and watercolour. This is water, watercolour. Uh, I think, if I'm honest, I've kept this page as well because it's a good reminder. I sometimes end up going over the top of watercolour with gouache and acrylic. And actually, I don't have to do that. I could just consider sometimes just using watercolour. And I do quite like this pinky blue uh, uh, tabletop that I've invented. Here, this was, I think this is where I start to get really like, come on, it's a sketchbook let's uh, embrace it and use use it to um, not be so, I guess, kind of precious, though actually, I don't think that is precious. But um, this is where though I start to use, I think more regularly. And I came in with some, what is this? Is this acrylic? Yes, that's acrylic. And so it's kind of mixed media. I've got gouache, acrylic, yeah, so I think it's even some Japanese watercolour. And just playing around with um, different perspectives, even adding this, there's something about adding this sort of gold square, like is it a table, like I'm not, I wanted to switch up my compositions from sort of the traditional, as it were, like here, this was set up in a more, I feel, traditional still life setup, but could I actually, Sometimes just play around with, like I've got a fake orchid plant that I always draw again and again, uh, but I vary the, le this isn't what it looks like at all. So can I just, it's more about design and not being a bit sort of naive, sort of that outside, like not drawing things necessarily as they are, but trying to have contrasts and yeah, not being limited necessarily. I don't think if I was thinking about composition there, or, but it seemed to work for me, it works visually. Um, here, this was fun. This is when I'm getting into Japanese. And this, was, this sketchbook really got me into the Japanese watercolours because I just started to play around with them. And I really enjoy the fact that they are kind of like a bit glossy, um, very saturated in colour, kind of opaque. And my set had some neons in it. So... I just felt I could get with one set of paint, paint quickly, fill up a page, but I just enjoyed the results. And the other thing, I think one of the reasons I got put off using this sketchbook, because it is such a large size, it sometimes felt a bit overwhelming compared to a little sketchbook that you could do quickly. But I think this is why I'm very loose in larger sketchbooks, because I don't want to spend like hours and hours over one piece in a sketchbook. It does tend to help me go a bit quicker and the materials I use tend to be materials that I know I can paint and draw with quite quickly. This is a page that I think went wrong. So yeah, I didn't like the flowers, what happened over here. So while this side, it all started off as watercolour. Sometimes it's good because it is a watercolour sketchbook. It feels like I might as well use my watercolours in it. Um, and But if it goes wrong, I know I can then layer on top some more opaque materials gouache, acrylics, etc. Even collage over could be a way of remedying a page that you really don't love. But I think I've kept that because it was a, I don't know, I just, I'm trying to see sketchbooks more now to learn from. Um, I guess sometimes they are like art books. A lot of sketchbooks are beautiful and they turn almost into like coffee table art books when you see them online. But yeah, I kind of don't mind having a bit of both pages that I really love and I love flicking through like this set and then I've got pages that I guess I'm not totally happy with but they've got learning um areas of learning in them if that makes sense good here is 
Yeah, this is why why I really love the. Um, I think it's a Mozart set of uh, Japanese watercolors, and it has. I don't have it on the table, but it's got neons in it, and I love I love neons, and I love the contrast of. Can you see? It? Can it, does it show? I hopefully it will. Just putting the neons on top of that sort of uh, orangey red watercolor paint, and I nicely picked up a pencil. I even like these little splashes of, because I'm going so quickly, I like the little accidental splashes there. Yep, so, yeah, it was it was good for me, actually, because I've always struggled a bit with water, I still do, with just using watercolour and that whole being, uh, what's the word, light-handed and, and just embracing the transparent qualities of it, because it just feels like there's less room for mistakes. And, you know, it can be quite frustrating if you, have a it works and then you go it, something I don't know just watercolor is a bit more uh tends to be a fine temperamental but I now know I can always paint over so I'm not wasting paper as such because I'm quite realistic going back to so yeah this was the plant um dra painting this plant but swizzling it around so I've got the different angles of it yeah and I like how how the colours, you know, sort of can bleed into each other, or oh, greens. All right, this one obviously is a painted over page, which went wrong, and I've come over with, uh, looks like, some acrylic, and yeah, quite heavily, um, or gouache, and it's weird, because I think, if I'm honest, <clears throat> I could come in and do more over here, but there is something about, I don't know, I just want to keep this as it is, Here's the colours as a reference. This page I might mark because I did, I think I wanted to keep it because, yeah. So here you could definitely see the properties of the watercolour. Like it was, I just was like, oh, imagine if I could be a bit light-handed and you do get these very sort of, um, what's the word, sort of ethereal, sort of just gentler colours that I, don't often keep in I feel like in my work and then you go from this to this page which is obviously very heavy-handed in terms of saturated color and line and I think I've used I feel like this has got what is this crayon maybe neon watercolor but then I've come over with some acrylic maybe ink I'm not sure this page was one that also went a little bit wrong I think so I started to come over the top with more um gouache I'm not sure about actually elements of it this is a, I see I repeat the same I do as you will know if you see my other sketch I do draw a lot of the same items again but I just sometimes vary up designs on them for my own interest I think that's a pomegranate i'm not sure got yeah just made up some uh, areas and then had fun with some i also like to add random marks sometimes to pages just if i feel because why not i like for interest to draw the eye um i like this page this is one of my favorite pages in this sketchbook and yeah this is i think it's a pink gouache paint or acrylic paint and so you've got here is sort of mixed media in terms of I think I drew with a looks like a some sort of crayon maybe a neo color crayon and uh, I've used watercolor but then I have come so I've got the water, watercolor elements but I've also used this very opaque gouache here and here with the pink and the orange I quite like that combination and there's just something about it I don't know if it's the composition but I really I really um, quite enjoy this spread. Then I did do a very quick landscape. I think this is a scene from Essex. I feel like I've drawn this landscape again and again. Uh, this with watercolour and then coming on top with a bit of oil pastel. Uh, this is actually, in a different sketchbook, I feel like I've repeated this scene, but in a different way. Which is interesting actually, because I forgot about it. Here, I've tried using a watercolour background and then it looks like I've come on top very loosely 
uh, and playfully even with some oil pastel and here i think i'm so it's funny i often use oil pastels but i don't whoops that daffodils going away um i don't blend them terribly a lot of the time but i did make an effort here to like try and blend them into each other and that's interesting to me because maybe it's something i should do more of right and yep yeah, this is a very light as you can see the pencil drawing which i like sort of a loose pencil drawing and then i've just come on top very lightly uh sort of some pastel -y. this is i'm pretty sure it's japanese watercolor I really need to get out my other watercolours and make use of them as well. I really am trying to use uh, a lot of my older supplies and get them out and explore them this year. Uh, here, well, I think I did this for a workshop, um, the least uh, still life flower, floral workshop. So I was just showing like elements of combining different how to go at combining different mediums and just loosely drawing that's obviously a collaged with a paper bag phase there I mean it's just I guess it's just to show me what you can do for myself and just yeah I do I think sketchbook can the sketchbooks can contain ideas for you know other work they don't as well as being um you know finished pieces in themselves I guess I think it's so interesting now, isn't it? There's such a range of content on sketchbooks, which I'm adding to. Uh, and it is amazing how everybody uses them in such different ways. And even how I have changed how I've used them. Uh, here, okay, this one is kind of went wrong. So what happened was I started off with this, this vase and I think I did, and, it, and I liked it to be fair. It was really, I was really happy with that as a watercolor and it was on white. And then I think I drew some flowers and I didn't like them. So then I came in and I don't know, I, I felt like I had to, I, it went where it went. And what, but what I kind of like is this is, I think a gouache. And then on top is that with a, obviously with a, br pretty sure it's a brush pen. I should write little notes on post-it notes and then I've come on top with crayon and I have to say as a, the idea was to have like a patterned wallpaper and I think that would be interesting as a drawing technique for subsequent work. Oh I like, yeah, I think I've shared this, um, I like this, this spread, uh, I've got some more daffodils, I, I had some daffodils and I, paint, I painted them loosely but I think they're pretty hopefully apparent they're daffodils. This vase is a glass vase that I have then painted pink because I didn't want to have to do, I just, some of the stuff, uh, sometimes drawing stuff again and again is great, but sometimes I get bored and then I just want to make things, uh, make up my own, as I've talked about many times, make up my own ceramics and vases, because that's fun, that's kind of like, I feel like going back to childhood, that whole, when we drew, I don't know, pretended to be fashion designers and you made up your own fashions or ball gowns that you were never going to own. It's kind of like a bit of a fantasy. You go, um, and it's sort of like a hopefully a harmless, you can go make up your own. I'm probably not going to, on top of everything else, get into pottery at any point, but I get the chance to uh, make up my own, if I was to have a ceramics, like what ceramics would I like more of if I had the space? Like here, you know, you can go on Pinterest or Anthropology or have a little, I think we're always absorbing ideas. It's just quite fun to make up your own uh, displays of flowers and um, I don't know, still lifes. I still do enjoy that. And that here's another completely made up one as well. Yep, and I like the colors here. There's something about this, I don't even know. Can I just say, actually, while I'm here with this page, I sort of obviously use this Artesia colour. I think it's from a neon set. I do like the neon set. I'm going to be really, probably never going to get sponsored by Mark Matthews. Look, I, well, I will for their sketchbooks. I love the Artesia sketchbooks. Uh, I think that's a great range. I have to say, as gouache, I am finding, this is great, it's, it's all right, but it's just, if you want, I do think Windsor and Uta and Holbein, you can get, I don't know, it's just different. You can, why I like them is you can reconstitute them um, a lot more easy. Uh, where is my, this is a super loose 
Uh, I think this was actually maybe I intended to come back in, but I think I want to keep it as a reminder that, I don't know, there's something kind of like a mystery element to it that I don't always have to overcomplicate or go too mixed media and things. This is a great, this page, I sort of got the inspiration from earlier on in my sketchbook. The, um, you know, when I got into Japanese watercolour uh, vases and I was like, I just want to do some ceramics. So I was thinking I was in a bit of a funny mood. Um, I wanted to get back and this actually reignited me again in terms of just enjoying playing with simple designs, playing with brushes and marks, just the, the joy of, um, in the sort of tactility of painting. And I I also like tallow tender, so I've done some separate ones on paper that I might turn into, see if I can turn them into prints, let's see. This is a very busy, uh, then you go from like, I don't know, you go from one thing to another in my sketchbook. Would you know it's from the same person? Maybe. Um, but so I do then sometimes want to go from simple to really busy, kind of like, sometimes I'm attracted to sort of like kitschy, garish. Uh, it won't surprise you to know that I can close. Like sometimes I like pattern on pattern. I just want, um, yeah. And this is a page that I was like, let's just go crazy with the colors. If I don't like it, I just paint all over it. But weirdly, I actually, um, yeah, really kind of happy with that page spread. And this one, elements, I don't know. So this was, I actually did try and use the Artesia gouache uh, as well for, um, because, and they and they are fine. Look, as a student, as a, as a sometimes again on off, you can get these, like, as a student grade uh, gouache paint, you know, I don't think, and if, you, if you're happy just to use it in one session, but correct me if I'm wrong, maybe I'm not giving it enough go at reconstituting it when it's dried. It just didn't, it just doesn't, yeah, it just doesn't come up, uh, reactivate as well as I think Winsor and Newton. At this page, I'm just gonna use to test stuff, I think, and play around to see if it will turn into an abstract, because it's the last page. Oh, and it also, these sketchbooks have nice little uh, pockets, which I can, I've got, I don't know about you guys, but I don't know like postcards sometimes. I've got, I don't get them anymore, but you remember in the old days, like even if these are really old postcards from exhibitions, like I'd spend 40p or 50p and go to the Tate, to the Tate Museum shop and get a few postcards. So I was thinking, oh, I just don't know where to keep them, but maybe keep them in the backs of sketchbooks. Anyhow, that was my sketchbook tour. Um, I hope maybe there's some information or some ideas for you. And yeah, thank you as always for watching. Um, and that's it from me. Bye.